pray, Lord, less, less of me and more of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I must decrease and you must increase. Lord Jesus, I give you all of my life. Please multiply my life into a miraculous power that will change the course of my life from an ungodly course to a godly course. From a godly course to a more godly course. In the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, all of my lifetime I give to you. Multiply my, my lifetime into a great miraculous power that will change the course of my life to a godly course in the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that you are the Lord of all, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give your Lord Jesus a hand. Amen. Every test that you go through, and wherever you are tested, it is God's way of preparing you for another level. Amen. No matter how severe the test might be, how difficult the test might be, it, it will work together for the good to those whom God loved. And say to God, to God for sure loves you. So no matter what happened to you, how painful it might be, how difficult it might be, um, God is busy in your life. The good work that he started, he will complete in Jesus' name. So sometimes when he takes out of the way the things that is not pleasing him, it is a very painful experience and something to cry, cry about for the now. But those who are trained by God's discipline, to them it produce a harvest of righteousness. Amen. The Christian life is not without pain. And a Christian life is not a comfortable life. If you want to walk close to Jesus, the life of Jesus was a very fulfilling life, but not comfortable every day. Say to God next to you, for the Christian, it is very fulfilling, but not to say comfortable. What do I mean by that? Not to say you're not going to experience persecution. Not to say that people will always speak good about you. Because if you want people to speak good about you only, then the Bible says, actually, woe to you if all people speak well about you. Because so they did about the false prophets as well. But remember, the true prophets got killed, got persecuted. Amen? So, when you go through difficult times, it is for your good. Amen? Say to God, to God is at work. But when you go through the difficult times, you make sure that Satan does not get his claws in. Amen. Amen. Um, let me tell you this. God does not use sickness. Satan is the one who steal, who kill, and destroy. So don't say when you're on a sickbed that God has placed me on a sickbed to minister to me. That's the work of the devil. But, say to God, to, listen to this, but. Everything worked together for the good to those whom God loved. God can use anything. He can use a sick bed. He can use even the devil's attack. And turn it around to the glory of his name and to your own benefit. Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. So many people say, oh, God has tested me with this. And uh, they say, I've been on a sick bed. And many people say this, listen to this. God, God has tested Job. He can test me as well. Where in your Bible do you read that God tested Job? Huh? Where in your Bible do you read that God tested Job? The Bible says, God cannot be tempted and he does not tempt no one. And every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of all, all heavenly, of, of all spirits. Amen? Every good and perfect gift comes from above. God cannot be tempted and he does not tempt no one. Amen? So what happened to Job? It was not God who tested him. It was Satan who tempted, who tested him, who went to heaven and asked permission to test him. Now, this is a difficult one, a difficult one to swallow because I know how Job felt. And please, never feel sorry for me, but there was a time in my life where Satan, not only one time, 
go and ask permission to test us. And it is we who gave Satan a right to ask to test us. Because of the foolish things that we get sometimes involved in. The foolish attitudes that we get ourselves in. The mistakes that we make, especially when those mistakes become a habit. Satan got next to a mistake. A something that you didn't want to do. What is the definition of a mistake? You have done something that you didn't want to do. That's a mistake. When your mistake, when you see, ah, nothing happened, I made a mistake. The pastor says to me, the consequences of sin is death. I made a mistake, I'm doing this thing, ah, nothing happened to me. I'm going to do it again, it's okay. You feel relaxed about that mistake. Now, when you start to make a habit of that mistake, it's not a mistake anymore. Now you're living a sinful lifestyle that is dangerous. Set your gun to definition of mistakes. It's something that you have done that you didn't want to do. You made a mistake. Satan made you, he tripped you. He led you into temptation. You have done something that you didn't want to do. That's a mistake. Set your gun to, we all make mistakes. Because in the book of James, it's saying that we all stumble in many ways. We all stumble in many ways. God's grace is covering our mistakes when we say sorry with the intention never to do that again. Give Jesus a hand. When is God's grace covering us? When you say sorry with the intention never to do that again. What, what, what do we call that? Say the spirit of repentance. The Christian cannot walk without the spirit of repentance. The Christian who do not experience the spirit of repentance, not the spirit of condemnation. Say to God, to enormous difference between condemnation and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Condemnation is feeling guilty and Jesus came to take away your guilt. Guilt do not contain any power to change your life. No amount of guilt or condemnation can change the course of your life. But conviction can. What is conviction? Definition of conviction. Conviction is a divine, a divine desire to change your life from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. Say a divine desire. To change your life from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. That is Holy Spirit's conviction. Never condemnation or guilt. Like the Afrikaans people said, Altijd in die oudheid, Die geest van God het my aangetla. Jy beskuldig iets, God van iets, Waarvan hy nie skuldig is nie, Because the Bible says, Satan is the accuser of the brothers, not, brothers, not God. The Holy Spirit will never ever accuse you. He is not the accuser. Don't accuse him of something that he's not guilty of. Do you understand? So when you feel guilty about something, throw away the guilt and don't confuse conviction with guilt. Conviction is not guilt. Guilt is a terrible, terrible um, thing that come upon you that make you powerless and weak. You cannot even repent. So God came to take away our guilt. I mean, he came to take away the condemnation. But he came with conviction. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict us concerning sin. Ask the guy next to you, what is this about the sin issue? Why, why, why does the Holy Spirit come and convict me concerning sin? He convict me about sin. What, is he, what do I mean? He convict me concerning the sin issue, meaning that he has dealt with my sin I don't have to serve it anymore. Give Jesus a hand. I'm not a slave to sin anymore. I mean, listen, the Holy Spirit will convict you concerning sin. What is the sin issue? When God speaks to you about the sin issue, He knows that the consequence of sin is death, so He came to take away our sin. And He, the, and he freed us so that we don't have to be slaves of sin anymore. You know what? These elephants in India, they train. They put a very small string around their ankle. And they, 
They pin the elephant with a small string. Now, you know the strength of an elephant. I mean, he can just do this and the string is broken. But the elephant gets trained and brainwashed that he is bound. So Satan binds you with telling you, and that's what people say to one another and Christians say to one another, ah, we're just humans, we're just flesh, Ugh, we, we will sin till we go home. Nonsense. The Bible says if you live in sin, you're not a child of God. If you live in sin, you're not a child of God. It's impossible. It says in 1 John, those who are born of God does not live in sin. Now, pastor, I make mistakes. Don't I live in sin? No. What is a mistake? Something that you have done that you didn't want to do. I mean, and then you say sorry about that something that you have done with the intention Never to do it again. Not to say you're not going to do it again. But you say sorry. Do repentance. It's a gift. Give God a hand for that gift. It's a gift. Amen. God knows when you live in sin, that sin is going to eat you. It's going to give the devil a gap on you to ask permission to test you and try you and give you a tough time. So God doesn't want you to sin because that's the reason why God so much hates sin. Is God a spiteful God that he doesn't want you to touch sin? I mean, some sin is sometimes pleasurable for the flesh for a short period. God hates sin because he knows that the consequences of sin is death. And the word death means separated from God. And he hates you as a Christian to be separated from him. He paid an enormous expensive price to take away the sin so that you can be in close connection and in fellowship with him. Any form of sin, how small it might be, separates us from God. Satan goes to any form of sin. Not your mistakes. A mistake, God covered with his grace. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. A persistent sinner, if you're a Christian and you're a persistent sinner, meaning you made a lifestyle of your mistakes, you make the mistakes over and over, the same mistake, you do it over and over and over and over, that means it's not a mistake anymore, it became your lifestyle. That means you have given Satan a legal right into your life. Satan needs to be careful. That means that you have given Satan a legal right into your life. Okay? Satan God needs to, don't you do that in Jesus' name. All right? So I explain to you what conviction is, what condemnation is. Repentance is a gift of grace. No one can repent by himself. It's a gift of grace that God grant us in his grace to free us from the devil's hold on our life. By the power of his blood, give Jesus a hand. By the power of his blood, amen. Say, a gift of grace that God give me to free me from the hold of Satan on my life by the power of his blood in the name of Jesus. Can anyone repent by himself? You cannot. I, let, the, let repentance fall on your life. Let conviction of Holy Spirit work in your life and change your ways so that your ways might be changed from an ungodly cause to a godly cause. Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you okay with that? Okay, I've got good news for you. If you say sorry with the intention never to do it again, Satan got no claim on you because God's grace is covering you. Give God a hand. Whoa! God's grace is covering the one who make mistakes and say sorry with the intention never to do that again. I mean, you need to get to that point. Shake the guy next to you and say, hey, listen now. The pastor is preaching to you so that you can get to that point where you will be safe in Jesus' name. If you keep on doing, making the same mistake over and over again, you're not going to fool God and definitely not the devil at all. You know, I came to realize the devil, I don't like to say it, but that's the truth, is very intelligent. I'm going to say something. Don't stumble over. I think he's a little bit dumb, but he's intelligent. How can I say he's dumb? 
Because anyone who turns against God must be dumb. Amen? But don't be mistaken. He is extremely intelligent. You're not going to fool him. He knows your heart. And that thing that you say, the devil doesn't know my mind. He doesn't know my thought life. You, you are completely deceived. He you knows everything. He you knows even, even, your, even your motive can be read in a spiritual realm. Satan knows even your motive. You cannot deceive God. And let me tell you, sad to say, you cannot deceive the devil even with your attitude. And your motive, because Satan knows your attitude and your motive. So when you say, ah, I'm going to say sorry um, with the intention never to do it again, but tomorrow I'm going to try that again because uh, Satan doesn't know my heart. Satan is in a spiritual realm. Nothing is hidden. Not your motive, not your attitude. Nothing is hidden in a spiritual realm. You cannot even deceive the evil spirits. And the evil forces. Therefore, the one who woke up right is the one who will be successful and victorious. Give God a hand. The one with the evil attitude and evil motive is going to be caught out. You can definitely not deceive God. He knows when you say sorry with the intention never to do that again. And maybe you thought the devil doesn't know the difference. He knows it as well. As well. He knows it very, very well. When you say sorry, with the intention never to do that again, Satan knows he's now powerless. In Jesus' name.